Hi there, Mr. Sutton bringing you the AB Calculus Chapter 5 Quiz 4 Review Answers on Average Value and Integrals by Substitution. On this problem, we're trying to find the average value of this function over the interval from 0 to 2. Now in general, average value, we find that with the formula 1 over b minus a times the integral from a to b of f of x dx. So in this case, we have 1 over 2 minus 0 times the integral from 0 to 2 of the f function, which is this function up here, negative x cubed minus 3x squared. So let's go ahead and take the antiderivative of this. Uh, we have a 1 half out in front from our fraction there. And then inside, this bumps up to a 4, so I've got negative 1 fourth x to the fourth, minus, this bumps up to a 3, dividing by that we have x cubed, again evaluated from 0 to 2. So I've got 1 half times all of this with 2 plugged in, minus all of this stuff with 0 plugged in, inside of big parentheses uh, next to this 1 half. Okay, so all the stuff in this second bracket is gone because I'm multiplying by 0 all the way through. Over here, I've got, let's see, negative 1 fourth times 16, which is negative 4. And then this is negative 8. Negative 4 minus 8 is negative 12. Half of that is going to be negative 6. Now, on a free response, um, please note that you didn't have to go any further than this part right here where you had all the constants written out. Um, but if you do choose to simplify, there it is. For this problem, we want the average value of this transcendental function from 1 to 5. So I'm going to have 1 over b minus a, which is 5 minus 1, times the integral from 1 to 5 of 3e to the x minus sine of x dx. And taking my antiderivative, well, I've got a 1 fourth here, but now taking my antiderivative, I've got 3e to the x, and then antiderivative of negative sine of x is positive cosine of x. Evaluating that from 1 to 5 now, we have 1 fourth times all of this stuff with 5 plugged in, minus all of this stuff with 1 plugged in. And I'm not going to go any further here, um, because... First off, I've got all constants, so if this is a free response problem, I'm, I'm pretty much done if I have all constants. Also, we really can't do much more with cosine of 5 and cosine of 1. Those don't have nice, neat, non-decimal values. Um, so we're just going to call it a day on this one. For this problem, I'm trying to find the indefinite integral of this expression in terms of x. So since I have an inner function and its derivative is elsewhere in the problem, I'm going to try to use u substitution on this. I'm going to start by letting my u value equal 6x to the 4th plus 1. So taking my derivative then, du equals 24x cubed dx. And then I'm going to isolate dx by dividing both sides by 24x cubed. And now I don't have to worry about u values in terms of the, the limits of integration because this is an indefinite integral. So I can just go straight to replacing stuff with u's. So we've got negative 24x cubed times the sine of u times du over 24x cubed. These 24x cubes cancel nicely, so this is just negative sine of u du. Antiderivative of negative sine is positive cosine of u plus c. And then replacing u with the uh, 6x to the 4th plus 1, because they said they want this in terms of x, I end up with the following. And it's done. For this problem, I want the indefinite integral in terms of x for this function. So this expression down here, this 2x to the 6 plus 8, uh, since that's in the denominator, that kind of counts as an inner function. It's in the function x to the negative 1, you could think of it as. Um, so I'm going to let the stuff in here equal my u. Um, and I'm using u substitution because I have this inner function, and I also have the derivative of this thing elsewhere in the problem. So I have u equals 2x to the 6 plus 8. So then du equals 12x to the fifth dx. Dividing both sides by 12x to the fifth, I have du over that that I can now substitute in for dx. And then going back here, I've got 18x to the fifth over u times du over 12x to the fifth. These x to the fifths cancel. I have three halves if I reduce the 18 over the 12. And I'm going to call this u to the negative 1. Um, you could call it 1 over u. It doesn't really matter. The antiderivative of u to the negative 1 or 1 over u, that's going to be ln of absolute value of u with this 3 halves out in front.
plus C, don't forget your constant of integration. Um, and I also have to replace the U value with this 2x to the 6 plus 8 to get my final answer. On this problem, I'm trying to evaluate this definite integral. Uh, now, this is going to be a bit of a bear to try to integrate the way it is. But because I have this inner function and its derivative or something close to its derivative somewhere else in the problem, I'm going to try U substitution on this. So I'll start by letting the stuff inside here, 2x squared plus 1, equal U. And then taking the derivative of both sides of that, I have du equals 4x dx. Isolating dx, I have du over 4x. And before I start plugging stuff in, since this is a definite integral, these start as uh, x values, these limits of integration. I need to convert them into u values using my equation I just wrote here, u equals 2x squared plus 1. Um, so if x equals 2, then u is going to be 2 times 2 squared plus 1, so 8 plus 1, which is 9. And then if x equals radical 12, u is going to be 2 times radical 12 squared plus 1. So radical 12 squared is just 12, times 2 is 24, plus 1 is 25. All right, putting it all back in there now, we've got the integral from 9 to 25 of 2x times the square root of u, because all this stuff is u, and then we have du over 4x. I can simplify a little bit more on this one. 2x over 4x reduces to just 1 half, and I'm going to write this as u to the 1 half, so I can use my reverse power rule to take the antiderivative. So this 1 half is going to bump up to a 3 halves, and then I have to multiply by the reciprocal of that, 2 thirds. 1 half times 2 thirds is 1 third, uh, so in my evaluation box then, I have one-third u to the three-halves from 9 to 25. I'm going to pull this one-third out here so I don't have to keep writing it over and over again. And I'm going to multiply it by the stuff that's being subtracted now inside my parentheses. So I've got u, or rather, uh, 25 to the three-halves. That's the square root of 25 cubed minus 9 to the three-halves, which is the square root of 9 cubed. This is going to be, let's see here, square root of 25 is 5, cube that you have 125, square root of 9 is 3, cubed is 27, so 125 minus 27. Still have that 1 third hanging around out there. Uh, so this is 1 third times 98, which I can write as 98 thirds. On this problem, I'm trying to find the definite integral of sine over cosine squared of x from 0 to pi over 3. Now, you might recognize this kind of problem. Um, it actually is possible to do this without substitution. If you wrote this as 1 over cosine times sine over cosine, that's really secant of x times tan of x, which has a pretty straightforward antiderivative. Um, but if you didn't spot that, you could always use substitution on this. So cosine is my inner function here, and sine is its derivative, or close enough to its derivative that we can use substitution. So I'm going to let my u value be cosine of x. du is going to be negative sine of x dx. And then dividing both sides by negative sine, we have du over negative sine of x dx, uh, or negative sine of x equals dx. There we go. I also have to replace these x values up here with u values for my limits of integration. So if x is 0, u is going to be the cosine of 0, which is 1. If x is pi over 3, u is going to be the cosine of pi over 3, which is 1 half. So then I've got the integral from 1 to 1 half, which seems kind of backwards, of sine over u squared times du over negative sine of x. Signs are going to cancel. This is going to be negative u to the negative 2 du. And then using my reverse power rule, this bumps up to a negative 1. Dividing by negative 1, I have positive u to the negative 1, evaluated from 1 to 1 half. And then plugging in both of these and subtracting, I've got 1 half to the negative 1 minus 1 to the negative 1. Well, 1 half to the negative 1, that's just the reciprocal, which is 2. The reciprocal of 1 is 1, so this is really just 2 minus 1, which comes out to 1. 